Tonight, a family says they were told that their loved one, Ronald Green, died after crashing into a tree. And now shocking new body camera video shows he was tased, kicked, and dragged face down by troopers in Louisiana. That video, which I will warn you is tough to watch, was held under wraps for more than two years, only coming to light now because it was leaked to the Associated Press. Ryan Young is out front. The video seen by the public for the first time in about two years since the deadly encounter between Ronald Green and Louisiana State Police officers. I'm your brother, I'm scared. After a high-speed chase led to a deadly confrontation just outside the city of Monroe in May of 2019, Green's family says the police initially told them the 49-year-old died in a car crash. State police said he was taken into custody after resisting arrest. Green became unresponsive shortly after and died on his way to the hospital. But new video reveals a more disturbing confrontation. In body cam video obtained by the Associated Press, troopers can be seen repeatedly punching Green after appearing to drag him out of his vehicle. Troopers tase Green multiple times while he's face down on the ground as they attempt to handcuff him. Another trooper appears to kick Green. All right. oh, all over. Oh. Oh, this guy, you got AIDS. Oh. The Associated Press released three segments of the original video, which it says is 46 minutes long. Only two of the video clips have audio. CNN has never reviewed or obtained the original video, and it's unclear what occurred before or in between the video clips. The 2019 state police report says officers attempted to pull Green over for an unspecified traffic violation. Moda Harden, Green's mother, says two investigator officers wouldn't tell her why law enforcement was chasing Green. Harden says the lack of transparency on behalf of authorities has been painful. I'm so pissed, but I'm a good pissed because we're going to get results. The Associated Press reports that at no time on the video can troopers be seen trying to render any medical aid to Green, who, according to the Associated Press, was face down and moaning for more than nine minutes. Motherfucker, you better not move. Two of the officers continue to be employed by the department. Both were reprimanded for their actions that night. One faced a 50-hour suspension for manipulating their body camera equipment. The other placed on administrative leave for an unrelated incident. A third officer died in a single car crash accident last year. For now, Green's mother continues to fight for her son. They beat him with the purpose of letting him just die. Aaron, when you think about this video, there is a point in it where it looks like an officer puts their foot on his back when he's trying to turn over, maybe when he's trying to get a breath. There's so many questions about this. Of course, we'd like to talk to law enforcement. They did put out a statement at some point saying the video release was premature. But if you think about this, you're talking about the two-year anniversary is just around this time. So still a lot of questions, especially for that family. When I talked to Lee Merritt, the family attorney yesterday, he was saying this is one of the worst videos he's ever seen. You can understand why this family's upset and why they're looking for answers. And joining me now is Ronald Green's mother, Mona Hardin, and Lee Merritt, an attorney representing Green's family. Thank you both for coming on. I know this is such an emotional time for you. Thank you for having us. And it Thank has you. been an emotional time, Mona, for you ever since your son died two years ago. These videos are so difficult to watch. I can only imagine as a mother what that was like for you watching your son's death play out like that on video. When you first saw the video, how did it make you feel? I was in total shock. I, I know I'm still in shock. Uh, just trying to... Uh, I don't even know if absorbing it is, is bringing it into reality that this has happened to my son. Uh, grief stricken isn't the word. It's horrific. It's, it's, it's so evil. Louisiana Patrol released a total of nine videos last night. This was only after the AP first obtained video of your son being tased and suffering at the hands of police. Were you aware of this additional video evidence showing how your son was treated by police? Yes, I was aware. I, I always knew uh, when they showed it to us uh, last year, September, I knew there was more to it. They didn't give it to us. I did ask at the time, where's the rest of it and why are we looking at footage with no sound to it. Uh, uh, that's, that's how it all happened. And the fact that this has played out the way it has as of yesterday, because there's so much noise behind it, uh, 
the integrity behind it all is uh, it's really questionable how and why. So, and two years. Yeah, I mean, there are so many questions after your son's death two years ago. Just to be clear, so a year and a half ago, state officials showed you some video, but it didn't have sound. Can you walk us through what you saw then compared to what is being released now, just to make sure we have a clear understanding? What I did see then was, uh, it, it wasn't the beginning. I did not see the beginning of it. I did see, uh, uh, and it was under the, which I agreed to the suggestion of my lawyers, uh, because of what they saw before me, what I did see was him being, he was behind the driver's, uh, the, the driving, the steering wheel. And uh, the film footage was from the passenger door looking in. And uh, he was attacked from there on. I saw and that he was going to leave, not alive. I'm sorry, say that last bit again, Mona. What I saw was that he was not meant to leave alive. This, he, he was going to be killed. You believe he, he was murdered. Without, without Lee, a doubt. Tell us, I want to bring you in um, to, get, to help explain to us how you believe this new video will help get you justice for Mr. Green and the discrepancy between what the police story was and what this new video shows. Well, we've seen a pattern in this country, an unfortunate pattern, when law enforcement alone are the only persons with access to in critical evidence like this kind of video, uh, and the, the process is to minimize the conduct, uh, to keep it out of the eyes of the public, and to protect the police officers. However, when this video was made public, typically by camera footage or cell phone footage, like in the case of George Floyd or Ahmaud Arbery, uh, uh, but even when that video uh, is even that video, the, the, the cell phone video is controlled by individuals. Once it gets out into the hands of the, the, the public, that public pressure ha, it t turns out to be very effective in holding um, in, in moving elected officials to hold police officers accountable. So that's what we're looking forward to in this case. So what do you think would have happened if the AP hadn't obtained this video initially showing Mr. Green tased and seemingly uh, beaten and tortured by police. I think what would have happened is what has happened. It's been two years and there's been a 50 hour suspension and no other punishment for any of the several officers involved or the supervisors who condoned the behavior. Uh, but for this leak, uh, that would have been the end of the Ronald Green story that, you know, Trooper Corey York received a 50 hour suspension and went back right back to work. Um, Lieutenant John Cleary uh, who condoned the behavior and instructed the men to leave uh, Mr. Green on his belly in a prone position uh, would have been would have gone without discipline, as he so far has. We're still waiting for accountability from him. And then Trooper Dakota uh, DeMoss would, would have gone unpunished as well. Uh, uh, that has been the story up until this point, but I believe that, that this family and our office is ready to fight to change that narrative. If you would, Mona, uh, take us back to the beginning and, and tell us what police initially told you and what this journey has been like for you seeking justice, trying to find out the truth about your son's death. What they initially told me that behind a long uh, chase, Ryan crashed his car into a tree and uh, he died there of head wounds. And uh, as far as the journey of where this has gone, it's uh, it's really a bad nightmare. It's 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 unreal. Uh, it's it's horrific how this has played out. How it's stretched out to one shut door, no answers, no nothing, uh, false leads here and there. Or I'll call you, and no one's ever called. I was told uh, when we were there, we were there nine days, that they would make they would get a hold of us as soon as the investigation was over, and no one ever called. It was it was me calling them. That is unacceptable. I think that everyone can agree with that. Just very quickly, Mona, um, as you look at the big picture, you know, uh, sadly, your son is not the only one who has died um, at the hands of police. We're approaching the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death. Do you believe um, that this is a case of a few bad apples in the police force or do you think that this is a systemic problem? It's definitely systemic problems because when you talk about a few bad apples, you're talking about a few. Systemic racism, the way it's been played out and how it's been for so many years, 
there's no other way you can paint this picture on the fact that it's systemic racism. There's no such thing as a few bad apples when you go into two years. There's more than that because they've been helped and aided along the way. Okay, Mona Hardin, I'm so sorry about your loss and how difficult it has been for you to get basic answers about your, your son's death. I'm sorry. And Lee Merritt, thank you for coming on. We'll continue to cover this story. Appreciate it. Thank you thank for you. having us.